Keep up to date everywhere. News Talk 820, WBAP. In the WBAP newsroom. Dr. Alex Del Carmen joins us right now from Tarleton. We always like to reach out to him, uh, all matters involved. We're going to have to put him on payroll. Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, another attack at Ohio State uh, yesterday. And Dr. Del Carmen, look, before we get into how security reacted, uh, can you react to uh, the statement that was sent out from the university, the alert, the text message to all students saying, and I'm going to, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, what was it? Run, Run hide, hide, fight. Is that, is that the correct response is that is that what they should be seeing you know it's hard to tell sometimes what universities do and they all vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction i can tell you that most of the universities across the united states what they would actually say is simply evade conflict that'll cost hide conceal yourself and and barricade yourself between you and the and the threat uh it's unusual for them to to engage in the word fight because it almost provokes you know, individuals to go out there and take actions on their own. We, we've heard from a couple of different experts, though. Some say, hey, listen, if there's nine of you and one of them, why not use your numbers as, as an advantage, though? Because you're the only per because all of all nine individuals are unarmed, and the person that's armed may have ten rounds. And so there's one round per person that yeah. comes their way, and that's the problem. You know, you just don't know. Just to localize it then, what would Tarleton State do? What would What would the message they put out? What would it say? You know, I think Tarleton State is, is actually at, in par with most of the universities in terms of our safety protocol. We've got amazing law enforcement and a safety protocol in place, and I can tell you that we, we rehearse on the, uh, for these situations from time to time, and, and I know that most of us are, are going to be told to simply barricade ourselves, to hide uh, and to try to evade the conflict and let law enforcement do what they do best. Plus, the great thing about Tarleton is there's a shotgun in everybody's pickup out in the parking lot, too, yeah. though, uh, hey, which is a good thing. You know, and you, you say that, uh, Dr. Del Carmen, what, what happens if you have campus carry, like some campuses do, and this breaks out, and a student pulls out his gun, and he's trying to defend himself or others, he's hiding behind the car, he's got his gun pulled, and cops pull up. How do they know he's not the perp? You know, that's one of the one of the most serious questions that has been asked, and, and some of the critics of Campus Carry uh, bring that scenario uh, up often. But but I personally, I don't speak for the university when I tell you guys this, but personally, I support Campus Carry. I believe that we should all have the right to defend ourselves, and I've been a professor for 20 years under very different scenarios, and I can tell you I feel safer when I carry on campus. But, but at the same time, uh, having said that, uh, when law enforcement shows up, by the time they show up, and I mean that with all due respect, uh, two or three minutes into the game, bad guy is dead, uh, handgun is down on the floor, and good guy is raising his hands or her hands saying, I'm the good guy, I just shot the bad guy, uh, threat has been neutralized. Tell me about the, the uh, scenario. Yeah, tell me about the work of Officer Alan Horoshko, uh there at Ohio State. Uh, we understand this didn't take long, and his training really kicked in, uh, and he took this guy out fairly quickly, right? You know, it went, it went by the textbook, which is what we like to see our law enforcement officers do. This particular police officer is a young guy. Uh, he's, he's, he's relatively new to the force, and he did exactly what he was trained to do. He was there within a matter of a couple of minutes. It, he neutralized the threat, and he moved on, which is great. Uh, that's what law enforcement is meant to do. I think the interesting yeah. thing about it, he's an Ohio State alum. Is that right? And I went to school there and wanted to stay. Is it completely different, though, when you run over people with a car as a weapon and then you get out and you have a knife and Brian's scenario of, hey, nine against one, nine people. Somebody's going to get cut up if you do that. So is it still just the best part to run away, get as far away from possible? Or uh, should you do a nine-on-one or a four-on-one, however it may, many it may be? You know, it's, it's again, you know, every, every situation uh, invites a different response from people. And people do things, in, you know, that sometimes not, not even training kicks in when, when those scenarios face them. But, but at the same time, I can tell you that, that the textbook answer and what we train our folks to do is to try to evade conflict, call 911, and make sure that you stay away out of, out of law enforcement coming in. At the same time, if the threat is imminent, if your life is about to be, you know, taken and, uh, and the lives of others, you've got to fight. Mm -hmm. and, and, and especially those individuals that have training. And we saw that yesterday where you had some former military that actually walked in and started securing some of the premises. All right, Dr. Alex Del Carmen, always appreciate the time. Thanks for carving out a couple of minutes for us today. Uh, from Tarleton, uh, always, uh, always good insight from him.